Okay, so we're going a little bit out of order. Today, I'm gonna to be going over uh, my medium format camera collection. We've already done my Canon camera collection, my Nikon collection. I still haven't done the rest of my 35 mil, uh, but so today we're just gonna kind of skip ahead and go to the medium format. And there's a reason I have all of these, which we'll get to in a video here, hopefully in the next week or two, because I definitely don't need them all, definitely don't use them all. So my first medium format film camera was this Rolly cord. This is an old TLR. Uh, it works, I've used it before. It's a great little camera. You can get decent results. Uh, it's even got the old school little metal cover here on the lens hood, but uh, it, it's, it's not bad, you know, it gets the job done. I was really pumped about this because of course it is a Rolly cord and I always wanted a Rolly cord or Rolly flex to be more exact. Uh, but so I got this in a big box of cameras with uh, this other camera here, the Rolly Flex. It's a 3.5 Tessar, another great camera, great body. I haven't used this one yet uh, because there is a gear loose or something here on the right hand side. And so unfortunately, I really wanted to use this. This was, I got this years and years ago, again, in my first TLR, first medium format camera, I haven't been able to use it yet. Uh, not the best Rolly I have here, but nonetheless, a cool little camera. Uh, TLRs are great, they're fantastic. Usually you can get some more budget-friendly options. These, the Rolly Cord and this Rolly Flex, they're not top of the line. Uh, they're not, you know, the three, four, five thousand dollars Rolly Flexes you're gonna see on eBay. The only downside to this is, of course, you're limited with your shutter speeds and your f-stops. And it's not like you can really pop an ND filter or anything on this. Uh, so you do have some limitations you have to work with. But if you're okay with that and you know what you're gonna be shooting in, you can get a film stock that kind of suits your needs and use a camera like that. I guess I'll just stick with the TLRs for now. Uh, this one, nothing to really write home about. I bought this at a flea market. I think I paid like 20, 30 bucks for it. I was pumped because it is a 2.8 uh, Carl Zeiss Tessar. So and it's an earlier model Rolly Flex. Uh, so I thought this would be a great camera for me to take apart and put back together and just kind of figure out how the inner workings of it are for the repair work that I eventually want to do. Uh, I cleaned the glass and discovered that it's kind of pitted. So I just put it aside and I haven't gotten back to it now. Another Rolly cord. Uh, this one I also got for $23. I got this from a gentleman and he just wanted it to go to a good home that it was going to be used. Uh, so I actually sent him pictures that I took with this camera in Iceland uh, after I used it just to reassure him that it had gone to a good home and was being used. Uh, but so this really cord again, I've taken this on several trips. It's a great camera. This one's probably going to be a couple hundred bucks, not as cheap as the other ones because it's slightly newer, slightly better, I think. But the Rollies, they're just great. You can't beat a TLR. They're different a little bit to shoot because you have to remember you're looking through one lens and the image is taken through another. You don't get interchangeable lenses. So basically you're fixed with like a 50 mil lens. But the Rolly line in general, you just, you just can't beat it. So from that gentleman, I actually also picked up this camera which I have still yet to use. So this is a Zeiss Icon and I've kind of always wanted to use this just because I think they're really neat. They're just, it, you know, it's one of those cameras where you're guessing your distance to your subject. Uh, the viewfinder is just for composing and it's not that great. I think it's um, six by seven ish or something. I could be wrong. Uh, I, don't quote me on that. I don't think it's square format. I haven't picked this up in a while and it folds up. So it is a quote pocket camera as they like to say. Do I agree with that? Absolutely not. Walking around in a suit, then yes, technically this would be a great little pocket camera that folds up just like that. Agfa, now I have done a video on this being kind of a budget medium format camera. Uh, prices are very different than when I first got into this. I think I picked this up at a thrift store for 20 bucks uh, online. They're anywhere from a hundred to a couple hundred bucks depending on various things. What's nice about this is it does have a rangefinder on here so you can compose your image and get your distance then you look down at that little meter and verify that distance on the front of the lens so that your image is lined up properly here to what you viewed in the rangefinder so i do like that it's better than just guessing with something like these ice icon i had to adjust the rangefinder they get really stiff really quickly so it's really difficult to use so I had to actually go in there, clean it, and I ended up filing it down to make it much smoother to change my focus distance because it was just really difficult and really annoying uh, and just took too long and wasn't, wasn't really usable in my opinion. Another Rolly cord. Uh, so I haven't used this one. The slower shutter speeds are 
a little slow, uh, so it needs a little bit of a cleaning to work. But other than that, if you want to use just the higher speeds, it works fine. It's a great camera. I was actually just going to turn around and flip this and never got around to cleaning it and doing so. And then I just love TLRs, so I just used it as an excuse to hang on to it. So there's still a couple TLRs left to cover, but I'm gonna kind of jump around here a little bit. So next up is the Mamiya Press Camera. Uh, another one I haven't used. I bought this one specifically for the lenses for another camera, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. Another one I plan to eventually try out. It's just kind of funky. I mean, it's got a decent viewfinder. It is a rangefinder there. And uh, this one, does this actually line up with the, yeah. So this actually does pair up with the lens, which is kind of nice. Uh, it's a nice six by seven negative. So not quite six by six, you get a bigger negative, which is gonna kind of cool, you get a bigger image. Yeah, just look at it. I mean, then once you put the film back on it, it sticks out another three, four inches on the side. Uh, it's, this is like an R2-D2 or something of cameras. It's really just funky. Uh, the focusing mechanism is built into the lens, which means if you want to build your own camera or something, the shutter and the focus are all in this lens, making it much easier to do so without having to, of course, build some sort of shutter and build some sort of focusing mechanism. So the Goodman Zone is a 3D printed body. A friend printed this out for me. It's a cool little camera. Uh, I don't really use it a whole lot anymore. I mainly did this to kind of get myself into the idea and the mindset of building a camera and just see how this works for eventually still yet again, I want to build my own. And so this just gave me some ideas on how this mechanism works how it's set up, uh, things I do and don't like, and just kind of a good starting point. So this has a Mamiya press lens on the front and a Graflex or RB67 film bag on the back. So you get a nice six by seven uh, negative. And then of course, because you have a Mamiya press lens, your focus is built into the lens as well as the shutter. Uh, so you just kind of have to zone focus with this camera and make it work. I've gotten some really good results out of this actually. We're almost kind of done. Next up, the Mamiya C330. Uh, I got this actually from Chris because I really like TLRs as we've discussed. And what's great about the C330 is the interchangeable lens aspect of it. Pretty much every other TLR has fixed lenses on it. The Mamiya C330 does not. So I have three different setups for this. I have a wide, uh, this is a 135, I believe. Yeah, 135. I have an 85 and a 50, I think as well, which is cool. Um, I don't necessarily take all three out and about with me, but if I wanna shoot a different focal length in a TLR frame, if I wanna shoot wide, or if I wanna really shoot something tight with this 135, I can do that, put that lens on and then go out and I can switch later back and forth. It is much bigger, much bulkier. That's kind of the price you pay for having that interchangeable lens aspect of it with the fact that it has billows you can use it for macro photography as well. So you get really up close, tight photos with these lenses also. I actually just put a roll of Kodak Gold 200 in there and I actually pushed it to 1600. Uh, I had mixed results with that, some issues. Some of them turned out really great and then there was some parts that just were really off. So I'm probably gonna try that again before kind of showing you the results on pushing that Kodak Gold 200 to 1600 because I thought that was very interesting. Another Rolly Flex. This is a Rolly Flex 3.5. This is another one I picked up at a flea market. Got a great price on it. Uh, the light meter on the side is busted. It just needs a new piece of glass. But other than that, the meter still works. Cleaned it out. So the meter works great. Just needs a new cover for it. Has the original lens hood here. So next we'll get into the 645 set of cameras. First off, this is the first 645 camera that I got, the Zenza Bronica ETR. Uh, it's cool. The only issue I have is, of course, pressing this button on front in order to get a light meter reading. So it's kind of annoying. You got to press this over here to get the meter reading and then make your adjustments. The handle's kind of nice. I kind of wish I had this small little wind on the side to make this even more compact for the 645. But Bronica is a very, Bronica is a cheaper brand, relatively speaking, in the medium format game compared to, you know, your RB67s, your Hasselblads. Uh, this is a 645 again, so you get, what is it, 16 shots as opposed to 12 with a 6x6 and 10 with a 6x7. It's a lot of numbers. And it has interchangeable backs, which is nice because you don't always get that, which is the case with this Mamiya 645. Uh, so I recently just picked this up, so I haven't tested it out yet. 
Uh, the downside to this is of course that you don't get the interchangeable back on the side. The cartridge is in the body of the camera. The footprint is about the same size as the Bronica, but Mamiya is a great brand. You all know Mamiya from the RB67s, uh, the C330s and the RZ67s and things like that. The 645 is a popular camera, great lenses, great results. Again, you can get these for a couple hundred bucks. So this is the Hasselblad uh, 500ELX. This was actually given to me uh, by a friend. I helped him sell some cameras and stuff. And so this was kind of his, <laughs> this was his beater body as he referred to it because it's just beat up. It's got a crack there, missing a nameplate over here and stuff, but it still works just fine. Um, haven't used this yet just because glass for Hasselblads is so expensive. So I just actually borrowed some from Chris. I didn't actually have to buy a film back uh, for this. Again, that is also very expensive. So those are some reasons why I haven't used this 500 ELX yet. But if you're looking for a Hasselblad, I hear these are relatively cheap compared to the other more popular Hasselblad models, probably because you have the big battery pack here on the bottom, things like that. Eye level viewfinder because the waist level finders are also a couple hundred dollars and very expensive. Now I have two of these RB67s. Reason being is because I recently found an unbelievable deal on them. It would have been stupid of me for me to not pick it up. And so, yeah, I have that. And if I wanted to, I could easily turn around uh, and get my money back, if not much more for the deal that I got this one. But that's not why I got it. This has a special purpose, like a lot of these do, which we'll get to again, like I said, in a future video. This is the original RB67 that I got way back in the day in a big bucket of cameras. I think I paid $300 for it. It had this, three lenses, two film backs, uh, a Nikon FE2, an Olympus XA, uh, an Olympus 35 SP, and then also in that as well, uh, the Plabel Makina. Now this is the Makina 2S. So this one was made just before the start of World War II. And this, for the time period, this just has a lot of smart stuff into it. Uh, so it's a Billows camera, and you can have interchangeable lenses on this model as well. Now it shoots a six by nine uh, sheet film, or you have six by nine, uh, 120 on this as well. So you get eight shots. Yeah, eight shots of six by nine. Next up, we got two left. So first, the Bronica SQA. Uh, this, again, with the Bronica line, this is a very popular alternative to Hasselblad. This whole setup might run you anywhere from $500 to $1,000, whereas a Hasselblad setup obviously is going to run you a much higher price tag. Uh, but so this, it's the same exact setup. You have interchangeable lenses, interchangeable lens hoods, interchangeable film backs, uh, all compact. It's, again, very similar in size to a Hasselblad, pretty much the same. And then lastly, this is my Rolleiflex, my 2.8F. And this is just a beauty. I'm actually really excited. I just finished off a roll of red rum in here that I just hadn't used in a long time because I didn't know what I wanted to shoot with it. So I finally just used it and got it out of there so that I can put something uh, a little easier to use and manage in here and kind of use this on a more regular basis since that had been sitting for months in here. Uh, but yeah, this is a 2.8F. I have a eye level viewfinder for this as well. This was serviced actually just before I got it that my wife got me this as our wedding present. But so that uh, rounds up my collection of medium format cameras. We kind of covered it all. So if you have any questions on any of this, feel free to leave that in the comments or shoot me a message and I will be sure to uh, answer this. But that's going to wrap up uh, my medium format film camera collection.